Hello everyone and welcome to Her Science. Today we are going to be talking about the four levels of protein structure. Here at the top I have them written out. It goes primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. Um, let's quickly talk about what a protein is and how a protein is formed. So first you have your DNA strand. Your DNA strand is transcribed into RNA. And then the RNA is translated into amino acids. And the amino acids are joined by peptide bonds that form a protein. So let's first start with the primary structure. So the primary structure is just a linear sequence of amino acids. And like I just said, amino acids are linked by peptide bonds. So if we look at this little picture that I've drawn out here, these circles here are my little representation of amino acids and these black lines are the peptide bonds. So the primary structure of a protein is essentially um, amino acids just strung along in a line. Moving on to the secondary structure. So the secondary structure arises from the hydrogen bonds formed between atoms of the polypeptide backbone. Um, if you watched, I believe, my last video, we talked about how the DNA double helix is formed through hydrogen bonds because that whole video was about hydrogen bonds. Um, but with the secondary structure, um, either a double helix can be formed or a beta sheet, or it's sometimes called a pleated sheet or beta pleated sheet. Um, but the beta pleated sheet is what this is over here. If you guys want a more in-depth explanation about what a hydrogen bond is, definitely go check out my last video that I made. Next, we will talk about um, the tertiary structure of proteins. So the tertiary structure arises from further folding of the secondary structure of the protein from forces such as hydrogen bonds, disulfide linkages, and van der Waals interactions. So for the last structure, the secondary structure, we only talked about um, hydrogen bonds, which can form either a double helix or a beta sheet. But with the tertiary structure, we have so many more um, different types of forces that can cause this structure here. So in a protein, you can have um, right here, you can see this line, that's a primary structure. And then also here are the double helixes. Maybe there's a beta sheet in here somewhere. Um, but a protein will be a combination of all of those. And then what happens in the tertiary structure is that it folds in on itself. And it forms this big cluster right here. And then moving on to the quaternary structure of a protein. So the quaternary structure arises from the arrangement of multiple protein subunits into a multi-subunit complex. And I have this starred here. Um, it uses bonds such as hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, dispersion forces, disulfide linkages, and more to form these complexes. So essentially, a quaternary structure just takes multiple tertiary structures to form this multi-subunit complex. So when proteins are formed within the cell, some, they go through a lot of different processes to become functional. And sometimes a protein in the tertiary structure isn't functional by itself. It has to be um, bonded with another structure to be functional and be of use in the cell, which is what happens um, with the quaternary structure here. So to review, we have the primary structure, the secondary structure, which can either be um, a beta sheet or a double helix. And then we have the tertiary structure, which is just um, the secondary structure as it folds in on itself. And then the quaternary structure, which is just the tertiary structure. Um, it's just multiple tertiary structures connected to one another. And that's the four levels of protein structure. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down in the comments and I'll try to get back to you guys. But other than that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.